This video is powered by Blue Eddie. I got a letter this morning, boy. Hey, hey, honey. I got a letter this morning, boy. Hey, hey, honey. I got a letter this morning. Gonna see you when the sun goes down. I couldn't read it for crying, boy. I had to stop at this spot on my way out to the coast. This is South Bend, Washington. It's my first time driving through this area and there's a really cool scene behind me of this old geo tracker in front of this pink building with a cross on it. I just think it's very unique. Probably something you only see here in South Bend. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop here, load up the Bronica with a roll of Portra 400, grab a couple of shots probably, and then we'll continue our journey off to the coast and see if we can spot anything else along the way. I got a girl in George, I'm gonna see you when the sun goes down. She's I like the car. Long, it's yours? Oh, nice. It's on my way out to the coast today and saw this this truck here, I had to take a picture of it. Things sweet. I, well, that's what adds. That's that, that's what adds the character, you know. <laughs> that's awesome. And I loved that that it was like right in front of the pink building, so you get that pink backdrop too. It's pretty sweet. There you go. It's right there. Okay. Uh, it's also on Instagram, so if you search the same thing on Instagram, it'll pop up. But I'm just a landscape photographer out near Tacoma, and. I travel all around Washington and just find cool places, cool people, and try to document it. So, yeah. Yeah, but, all right, sounds good. Hey, you have a wonderful day. Thank you, I will. You have a nice day. Well, I figure I should grab a picture of this old motel while I'm here. It's pretty cool. I got a letter this morning, gonna see you when the sun goes down. By no means am I super stoked on this one, compositionally speaking, but I think the two subjects are pretty interesting when put together. This old rundown Coastal Coffee 101 little drive through coffee place, and then off to the right side of the frame, Dollar General store and then the big semi truck parked out in front i think there's some intriguing comparisons to make between these two subjects in the frame had a bird fly through the frame on that one it's pretty sweet oh just driving down the road and i spotted this really weird subject out the corner of my eye, got a boat with a bunch of plants growing inside of it. All these ferns and bushes and stuff, so it's definitely been here a while and I think it'll make for a pretty, pretty intriguing photo. I get blue in the morning time I get blue in the evening too If the evening come around too long Lord have mercy, I get blue In the, in the afternoon Listen to the birds outside my window I always find it interesting when I come to beautiful places like this and then see that people decide, you know what, this is where I'm gonna litter. Never has made much sense to me. All right, I'm gonna do a bit of a wild card here and load up some expired Portra 800. Now, I also brought my Olympus 35, which I haven't shot in quite a while and some Fuji Superior 400 that I'm gonna put into this guy and just kind of mess around with for the rest of the day.
It always blows my mind how loud the ocean is. It doesn't seem like water could make that kind of noise, but even with the most mild waves, it just erupts. It's so cool. I love having the 35 with me just to take some carefree pictures with. I don't really feel that bad if I'm not super stoked on the composition. It's more so for the memories. Oh wow. This is something else. Those of you that know me know I'm a bit more of a mountains guy than I am a beach guy, but there's no denying the beauty of the Washington coastline. I am packing up at this lookout. Absolutely gorgeous views. I'm gonna try to go get a closer look at that lighthouse though that I saw when I was flying the drone. I knew it was out here, but I just wasn't quite sure, relatively speaking, where it was and how to get a good view of it. But it looks like there's a path that you can just walk on. It'll lead you right there. So that is exactly what I'm gonna try to do. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can go take some pictures of the lighthouse. poster here and there's actually two lighthouses out here at Cape Disappointment. This one is the North Head Lighthouse which was built in 1898. The older lighthouse, Cape Disappointment Lighthouse, that is a bit farther south and that was built in 1856. So I don't know if I'll have enough daylight to get down there but I think that was the lighthouse that I saw pictures of originally that you can get down on the beach and get a really cool vantage point of. So we'll see if we have time to do that. But I mean, this one is pretty damn cool too. Pretty wild, the poster says, shifting sandbars, violent storms, and treacherous waters resulted in hundreds of shipwrecks and lives lost. Mariners referred to this area as the graveyard of the Pacific. When you hear desolation call your It appears in a voice full cold with pain. When you the light's dipping pretty quickly, so I don't know if we'll have time to go to the actual Cape Disappointment Lighthouse and get some pictures off, but I'm gonna try hustling back to the car right now, pack up, we'll head out that way to hopefully grab a picture or two. 
Well, that's unfortunate. I bet it closes at sundown and the sunset about 10 minutes ago, so must have just missed it. Well, there's always next time, right? Hey guys, briefly want to jump in and say thanks to Blue Eddy for sending me over this bad boy. This is their EB55 power station. Now, listen, you guys know me. I'm not endorsing anything on this channel that I don't believe in. A lot of people reach out to me. They want advertisements done in two weeks. They want to send me the product. They want a dedicated video up in two weeks. I'm like, no, I don't have time to test it. I don't have time to see if it works. I don't have time to see if it aligns with my workflow and my process. Luckily, Blue Eddy, they accommodated me by allowing me plenty of time to test this product. So I've had it for about two months now and just have been bringing it with me on various trips and outings out here in the Pacific Northwest to give it a go and see how I like it. And let me tell you, you guys know what I do. I go off the grid a lot. I'm remote. I'm on the road, oftentimes overnight with no power. This allows me to charge all of my camera batteries, all my essential pieces of gear. And all I have to do is charge this thing up once it's got plenty of power to charge. I mean, right now I got, I got like four things charging on this thing. So you, you got four AC outputs. You got four USB DC outputs with the USB-C as well. And then you got a couple other um, outputs up here. And then also for some reason there's this badass light on the back, which I am a big fan of. Anyway, um, yeah, this thing is absolutely essential for me and anybody else that's on the road often and at and finds themselves in places without power like earlier today i went through two of my drone batteries and i'm on my third it's almost dead so i just had these two sitting back here charging up with the blue eddy ready to go for when my third one died i got my v mount charging back here i can got another couple of black magic batteries charging and i also got my macbook pro back here charging so this is just an example of what you can do with this thing um, and i love the little monitor on the front it tells you what your output is it tells you how much power you're outputting and how much battery level is left on the eb55 so blue eddy they got a ton of great products they got bigger stations than this and they also have additional accessories like solar panels that you can connect to these things to get it charged which is super rad if you need a fully entirely remote multi-day setup they got you covered and i was really surprised with how durable and rugged these things are built they're built very very sturdy i mean a lot of weight and heft to this thing it's not going to break and they got three different colorways as well which is pretty cool so again thanks blue eddy for sending this my way i have really been enjoying it and it'll definitely be accompanying me on the rest of my trips for 2022 and beyond like i said their information and link to the eb55 and other products will be available in the description below to your own sheets of gray slow down Got a two and a half hour drive home and there's no way there's not at least 12 compositions waiting for me on that drive. So I'm starting here in Iwako, I guess it's called. It's the closest town to Cape Disappointment. And there's a small little marina here, a little port, um, and not much going on, but I think there's a couple cool pictures I can get here. The water is super still, got a beautiful reflection of the last bit of the light. Um, in the water, so I'm going to try to grab that and, and see what else we find on the way home. I'm going to go with Portrait 400 for this final roll. I got myself another shot of the coho mooch framed up. I want to get this little light, this dock light in the frame, but it's so bright compared to the light on the mooch. So 
I don't really know what to do here. I think I'm just going to expose kind of for the mid-tones and hope for the best. Yeah, so the light over at the Mooch is like 3 seconds at f5.6, maybe 4. And then this light on the dock is like half a second. So maybe we'll go 2, two seconds at f5.6. And that will bring us to, that'll bring us to four seconds after reciprocity. So I'll just do f5.6, four seconds. You know what, I'm actually, I'm gonna bracket this one. I'm gonna do one at half of a second. Then I'm gonna do another one at four seconds, just to see what kind of difference we're working with here. This is actually something that I should see the results of for future reference. All right, so this one's at four seconds. Here we go. All right, so technically two stops difference on that one because reciprocity, so half stop, or a half, half a second, and then two second exposure, which is four seconds after reciprocity. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I don't know exactly what I'm F four and a half at four seconds. Really love playing with the reflections in the water. You got this other much warmer and much dimmer dock light. There is some movement in the water. There's some ripples, so we'll see how this four second exposure pans out. All right, co-host Sally, what do you got for me? Who would have thought all 12 photos would be lying for me here at the Iwako Harbor slash marina slash port, whatever this place is. But yeah, here I am on the last frame. Now I understand that a lot of these photos I've taken here in the harbor, particularly the ones of these coho boats are very similar compositionally speaking, but I think that's fun to do every once in a while just so you can figure out which photo really stands out it stands out to you and which one you like best. Every second, every day. Mm -hmm. And that is all she wrote. Mm -hmm.